So I began this winter retreat, however long ago that was, with the goal of doing the more full visualization of the refuge field. When I had the opportunity to engage in this um, practice a few years ago, I just had a, a simple visualization that I used and I really enjoyed. And this time I wanted to make it a little more complete. Um, so this quickly led to a puzzle. Looking at this big complex visual, uh, visualization, oops, see, I'm already failing, okay. Who are all these people? Um, you know, I'm visualizing them, but of course in my visualization it's like just a bunch of people. Most of them are monks, some of them are Indian, some of them are Tibetan. Um, but I didn't really know much more than that. So I had the goal of figuring out who they were, learning something about them. I set this goal for myself thinking this would be a nice way to delve in, learn more, and then really connect more with my refuge in especially the Sangha, thinking that some of these great masters of the past are Arya beings, so they would be part of the, the Sangha refuge. Um, but this quickly became a puzzle. And so far in a few months, what I've really managed to do is find some pieces of the puzzle. And at this point, knowing that um, my time in winter retreat is nearing an end, my hope is that this topic will come up again soon, um, the, the refuge Mundro practice, so that I can keep working on this. So I want to share a little bit about just some of the pieces that I've found so far. I don't actually have much of an answer yet, um, but I hope that you uh, find this interesting and possibly helpful. So the first thought I had in terms of figuring out who these people were is uh, doing a Google search, and that didn't help that much. There's surprisingly not a lot of information. I mean, and even in the simplified form that we have, it's like, okay, we know that um, Maitreya is on one side and Manjushri is on the other, and that, okay, we have Nagarjuna up here, he's easy to find because there's snakes behind him, and so, okay, this is the profound view, we're told that, this is the extensive deeds. Okay, so we have that much information. So then trying to dive in a little bit, it's like, okay, if I know the name of this lineage, I should be able to find the people in it. So one resource for that is actually that there are these wonderful maps available for the Lama Chopa merit field. And so in that case, that still has, um, you know, these different groups, the lineage of widespread activities using the terminology from this translation of Pabanka Rinpoche's liberation in the palm of your hands, um, the lineage of the profound few, and then further um, in time then the Kadam lineages, three of them. So, okay, this, this was helpful. Um, and I started using this and figured out that the list of people in the Lama Chippa merit field does not exactly match the list of people in the refuge field that we're looking at. The numbers don't quite work out. Um, so I continued to dive, and one of the other resources that I found that was helpful um, was looking actually at the root text for this. So the visualization that we're doing, it said this comes from the Jorcho Puja. So I looked up, well, what is the Jorcho Puja? And the root text for it, actually, is in the back of this book. And it is, if I find it, it's in one of the appendices, and it is, now I'm finding quite difficult, the Appendix C. There's a translation in English, and to give you the title as it's represented here, A Necklace for the Fortunate, a convenient recitation performing, for performing the preliminary practices according to the quick path, an explicit instruction on the stages of the path to enlightenment. So I looked at this, and, and this kind of made sense. It would, the six preparatory practices, a little more fleshed out than we're used to doing them, but very much familiar. And the visualization that it describes is what we're doing 
but it doesn't actually name all of the people and where they're sitting in the visualization, which I found quite frustrating. I wanted a very clear map. Um, however, in the sixth of the seven, limb, um, seven limbs, there's the supplication. And the supplication goes through and lists all of these names. And my thought is, oh, OK, these are the names of the people in the refuge field. And people are nodding because this is common knowledge that I didn't have. Um, <laughs> and so what's interesting, I got quite excited about this. You know, we do the supplication prayer in our blue book. We have the, the very short version that we do, the, the two verses. Um, glorious and precious root guru sit upon the lotus and moon seat on my crown. But in the full meditation of the Buddha, we add a couple more verses. Buddha, unequal teacher and guide, venerable protector Maitreya, his successor, superior Asanga, prophesied by Buddha, to you three Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, I make request. Oh, that's this side of the, can, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but, but that's one of the sides of this refuge visualization. And then the second one. Buddha, head of the Shakya clan, the foremost guide, peerless in expounding emptiness, Manjushri, embodiment of the Buddha's complete wisdom, exalted Nagaj Nagarjuna, best of the superiors who sees the profound meaning, to you three crowning jewels of clear exposition I make request. Okay, now this is the other side. So, so this, is, this got me excited that, oh, I know some of these verses already, and there's just a whole lot more of them. And so... Um, there's a statement that I believe Pabanka Rinpoche makes that if you know the life stories of each of these people, reading this brief praise actually will tell you a lot about them and remind you about them. Um, of course, I don't know who these people are, and so when I read Glorious Gonbawa, Lord of Yoga, Nisurba, Firm and Profound Concentration, and Takmapa, Holder of the Anaya, Entire Vinaya Basket, I make supplication to these three lamps for an outlying country. Well, I'm guessing that Gonbawa, Tantra, Nisurba had good concentration and Takmapa had good ethics, but I don't actually know much more about them. So just having this, um, these praises were helpful in that it at least gave me a list of names, but it didn't yet give me that connection to them. Um, the other thing that I was trying to figure out was, of course, where are they? You know, it's, there's still all of these people here, and now I have the list of names, but I don't, for the most part, know who is who. Um, I looked really closely, and I think there's someone who's not a monastic, so I think that's Dramtonpa. <laughs> and Tsongkhapa has pretty um, consistent iconography, and so I think I see Tsongkhapa, and oh, I think I see Tsongkhapa on both sides. And this, <laughs> yes, I, I know, Venerable, this is m me showing how little I, I know. Um, so, so trying to figure out, okay, is it really some of the same people on the same sides? What I found um, was actually a commentary written um, written by someone who I think is a student of Pabanka Rinpoche that seems to go through in a little more detail, I think. Um, it's in Tibetan, and I've been working on trying to translate part of it. to tr Now, the nice thing is it's at least a modern book, so it's readable Tibetan. And I've been trying to go through and actually see his description because he goes into more detail regarding, you know, okay, there's eight of this and six of this and where are they sitting? Um, but I haven't translated very much of it and I started to question whether or not this is even a commentary on what I think it is a commentary to. Um, it's definitely a related to the Giorgio, uh, the Giorgio Puja, um, the Necklace to the Fortunate, but there are these different visualizations. And as I started to read more, I started to see how many different possibilities there are. Even Pabanka Rinpoche talks about the notion that there are passages where he says, oh, we're talking about the, the quick path or the swift path. But then in other places, he says, well, this other long rim text actually describes it differently. And then somewhere, I think he mentions the Southern tradition. I don't know what that is. So going through and seeing like, oh, there's all of these different traditions 
And in fact, they're going to describe this in slightly different ways. So if I'm just doing Google searching and finding a variety of websites that claim to say something, and you know, finding somewhat random Tibetan texts that I think might tell me about this, I might actually be putting pieces together of different puzzles. This might not actually be helping me understand more about, see, I don't know how to, nope, I guess it's all pretty. I might not be learning more about this specific picture. So that's somewhat where I got to in that, okay, I'm not really sure, um, even if I'm putting together just one single puzzle, and I see the need to really come back and rely on one source. And one thing that I, I see is probably going to be the most helpful guiding principle is in fact Pabanka Rinpoche's uh, liberation in the palm of our hands. From the blue version, which is, um, I think, Michael Richards' translation, there's this really helpful list in the back of the different lineage lamas. And so we have the extensive deeds, we have the lineage of the profound view. So again, that's the left side and the right side, the top portion. And what's interesting is trying to look up things like, okay, we have Vidya, Vidya Kokila, the elder and younger, um, I can't find him from, like some sites seem to only talk about one Vidya Kokila. One place claims that Vidya Kokila might be the same as Avadhu Tipa. So clearly I have a lot more learning to do and really trying to figure out who all of these people are. Then we get down to Atisha oops, and Dramtonpa where this merged with Atisha. Okay, this part, these people are more familiar to me and then we get to the three Kadam lineages. This is replicated on both sides. So this is the part where it starts to be, okay, some similar people. Um, and some of the names I know, like Potoa and Shawara. Okay, great, I, I've heard of these. Um, but Gergonpa I haven't heard of. And what also doesn't help is that this list in different places, the names appear quite different because these are long Tibetan names where they have their titles and they have their ordination names, and um, so it's actually quite confusing even trying to figure out who some of these people are because the way their names get shortened can be so uh, different from one place to another. Then, whoops, it didn't turn. Um, Okay, that, that makes me feel better to know that typical monks wouldn't know this, but I think they know the praises, right? I think the pra it seems like the, that long prayer of all of the praises is something done pretty commonly. So my thought is that might give them some sort of feeling for, for who these people are, even if they don't know where everyone is sitting. Um, but so, so far, hopefully your takeaway from this is that um, this has really <laughs> given me a dose of humility in... <laughs> how much I can actually figure out. And especially when I then got to the Gelukpa lineage, I'm like, okay, Songkhapa, I know Songkhapa. I can find him in the image. And then there's all of these other people. And most of them, I didn't know. Some of them, patterns started emerging. Like Gyoa and Sapa is actually mentioned in the beginning of Giorgio as the person who really set forth the preliminary practices okay, he's someone worth knowing. And starting to appreciate this lineage, and I started trying to take notes on this, and of course I, I have hope of, of really learning all of this somehow, um, that Kedrup Rinpoche, okay, I recognize the name Kedrup, um, is recognized as the first Panchen Lama once Losang Choki Gyeltsen was officially recognized as the Panchen Lama. They went back and added some before. Um, so that explains why I can't always find the same consistent numbering of the Panchen Lamas. But what's amazing is going through this and seeing, okay, you know, we have the author of The Easy Path, the here listed first Panchen Lama. Then Losang Yeshe is the second Panchen Lama, the author of The Quick Path. Okay, I can start to see who some of these people are, that I've really never paid that much attention to them because I've only been paying attention to Songkhapa. He wrote the Lamrim Jembo, he wrote the middle length Lamrim. If I read those, good. What else do I need? So, seeing that so many of these people who came after Songkhapa, these great masters, were requested by their own students. 
to write their own texts, to expand on something, to make a shorter version of something, to make something that can be practiced. It's, it's realizing that my view was so narrow of, well, if I've read the Lamran Chenmo, okay, you know, I'll just keep reading that one text again and again, and that will tell me all I need to know about the Lamran. And I'm starting to see how tiny that view is. And seeing that for some of these people, I can find their text, like Pabanka Rinpoche down at the end. Okay, you know, his text is, is in English wonderfully. Um, but so many of them, their texts aren't necessarily translated into English. And they've certainly made a contribution that the, this praise verse recognizes, though I might not know it yet. So for me, a big takeaway from this has really just been humility, that there's this incredible lineage of masters who, again, many of them, when I find some information on them, talks about you know, what stage of the bodhisattva path they attained, you know, what realizations they had, which deities they were able to have visions of or communicate directly with. So, so these are absolutely people I could be taking refuge in as part of that Sangha jewel, but I need to know a little bit more about them. So my hope is to keep studying um, on these different lineage masters, to read their texts, to appreciate that I can't just... Um, think about Tsongkhapa and end it at that point. And there's one book that I hope to read in the future uh, by Professor Jan Willis that goes through the Gandan oral tradition, which has some overlap with the um, Gelugpa lineage that's represented in that part of the refuge uh, visualization. So it's a really big puzzle. Um, I'm glad that there's at least some resources now in English. And it helps me appreciate that many of these resources have only existed for the past perhaps 10 or 20 years. Um, so hopefully in my lifetime, many more things will be translated into English so that we can all get to know these amazing masters and take inspiration from them and benefit our practice and benefit others.